today. It's a beautiful day outside, and, and uh, I think the weather is going to warm up a little bit this week, so we're very fortunate. Unfortunately, the bad news, of course, is that the COVID cases in Thayer County and, uh, and around us, and well, all over the country actually, have gotten very bad. So we're trying the virtual worship, and, and uh, it's just not to say not having you here. So. Please be assured it's a temporary situation and we'll be back together as soon as it's safe. I'd like to begin with our confession and forgiveness that's found on page three in your bulletin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our hymn, When Peace Like a River, or you might know it as, It Is Well With My Soul. It's a beautiful hymn written by Horatio Spafford. In the 1800s, Mr. Spafford lost all of his, his home and all of his belongings and I believe maybe even his business in the Chicago Fire, the great Chicago Fire. He sent his family to Europe so he could take time and rebuild. But on the way to Europe, the ship that his family was traveling on sunk. Horatio received a, um, a telegram that had two words on it. It said, saved alone. And by that, Horatio knew that only his wife lived. So this hymn was written. Horatio took a ship over to, fight, to meet with his wife. And when he got over the place where the ship had sunk and his family had drowned, he was inspired to write this hymn. It is well with my soul. <laughs>
be with you all. And also also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, have have mercy. mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue with the prayer of the day on the front of your celebrate insert. Let's pray together. Righteous God, our merciful master, you own the earth and all its peoples, and you give us all that we have. Inspire us to serve you with justice and wisdom, and prepare us for the joy of the day of your coming. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this point, I would tell you to be seated. So if you're standing, you may sit down. The first reading comes from Zephaniah, the first chapter. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated his guests. At that time, I will search Jerusalem with lamps, and I will punish the people who rest complacently on their dregs. Those who say in their hearts, the Lord will not do good, nor will he do harm. Their wealth shall be plundered, and their houses laid waste. Though they build houses, they shall not inhabit them. Though they plant vineyards, they shall not drink wine from them. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be like a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of trumpet blast and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the lofty battlements. I will bring such distress upon people that they shall walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust, and their flesh like dung. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them. On the day of the Lord's wrath and the fire of his passion, the whole earth shall be consumed. For a full and terrible end he will make of all the inhabitants of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsibly from Psalm 90 and Oh, and also the, the chorus. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, or the land and the earth were born, from age to age you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight, are like like yesterday when it is past, and and like a watch in the night. So So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we are consumed by your anger, We are afraid because of your wrath. Our iniquities we have set before you, and our secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you teach us to number our days, 
that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. When you are angry, all our days are gone. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The span of our life is seventy years, perhaps in strength even eighty. Yet the sum of them is but labor and sorrow, for they pass away quickly and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath? Who rightly fears your indignation? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. The second reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers and sisters, you do not need to have anything written to you. For you yourselves know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. When they say there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them, as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and there will be no escape. But you, beloved, are not in darkness, for that day to surprise you like a thief, for you are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night or of darkness. So then let us not fall asleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober and put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has de destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the gospel acclamation. Alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. But here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, 
that I reap where I did not sow, and gather where I did not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with the ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Christ. Christ. Well, if you are standing for the Gospel, you may be seated. Well, this is kind of a weird gospel lesson. It's a weird story. Uh, this message, of course, is for the kids, but adults you can listen to. A talent, it talks about a man giving his slaves talents to take care of while he's gone. But these talents are not like, you know, whether you can sing or dance or those kind of talents. These talents have, are a form of money, and it's a lot of money. So this master is expecting his slaves to be careful and to take care of his money while he's gone. They don't know how long he'll be gone. So it's kind of an unusual story, but I think it's a story that has to do with how well we wait and what we do with what's God given us, what God has given us while we are, are waiting. Now as kids, there's things you wait for, I'm sure. You might wait for someone to get out of the bathroom, I don't know. You might have to wait for dinner to be ready, and you might be really hungry. You might have to wait for your best friend to call you on the phone. There's a lot of things that you could be waiting for. But you know, it matters how you wait. For instance, do you wait like this? I don't like to wait! Careful. Oh. Or do you wait like this? I hate waiting, it makes me mad. Or do you wait patiently because you know that something good will happen? So our gospel lesson has more to do with how those slaves waited for his master, their master's return and how they used the gifts and the talents that they had and their skills in making more money for the master during that time. So that's our lesson for today. It's all about waiting. retired from teaching school and moved to St. Augustine, Florida, I decided that I would like to go and visit her. So I planned a time to travel to her house and spend a few days with her. Now I should mention that many years ago, a family member worked for an airline, and this airline had reduced fare passes that we could use. However, it was like flying standby because passengers paying full fares always had top priority. So my first lesson learned was never fly standby on, on, during spring break when you're trying to get to Florida and that you don't really care about spring break because flights were full and they were overbooked. While my mother-in-law waited patiently for hours and hours actually, for my arrival at the Jacksonville airport, I was scrambling around trying to find a flight that had any room left. Eventually, I ended up in Miami and got the last seat on the last flight for the night that went from Miami to Jacksonville. I was tired and frazzled, but I was also comforted knowing that I was on my way to my final destination and that there was someone waiting there for me who loved me and whom I loved. Encourage one another. The last few weeks, our lessons have had a lot to do with the end times and the return of Jesus 
as prophesied and promised in the scriptures. The lessons have been about waiting and preparing as we wind down the church year and anticipate Advent and Christmas, remembering again how God came in flesh, being born to Mary. But I don't want to get too far ahead of ourselves, because this waiting and time of anticipation has a purpose. 1 Thessalonians is thought to be one of the oldest letters of Paul to the early church that we have available to us in Scripture. It's possibly written less than 20 years after Jesus' death and resurrection. One of the topics that concerned this new Christian church was about Christ's return. What should they expect? What about people who had already died? Well, nowadays we have a fancy word called, that's called eschatology, or the doctrine of last things. These first century Christians were waiting, and they believed Jesus' return could come at any time. Paul reminded the church at Thessalonica that about the times and seasons, they really didn't need to have anything written to them. They already knew, and they knew it very well, that the day of the Lord would come at an unexpected time, like a thief in the night. That wasn't new information to them. The day of the Lord is a concept that comes from the Old Testament. Consider the first reading today that comes from the prophet Zephaniah. Be silent before the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast, it continues. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The warrior cries aloud there. That day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. The prophet speaks of the day of the Lord as a time of judgment and punishment. Paul is clear that the church at Thessalonica should keep ready, because just when they get comfortable, just when they think that everything is peaceful and secure, when they let their guard down, sudden destruction will come upon them, and there will be no escape. Author C.S. Lewis describes the uncertainty this way. The doctrine of the second coming teaches us that we do not and cannot know when the world drama will end. The curtain may be rung down at any moment, say, before you have finished reading this paragraph. It could come at any time. And how frightening is the day of the Lord. But fortunately, in Paul's writings, he doesn't stop there. He says, but you. But you, Paul tells them, you, beloved, are not in darkness for that day to surprise you. His words echo Jesus' teachings in the Gospel lesson we read last week. It was the parable of the ten bridesmaids. Five had brought extra oil and were prepared in case they ran out, but five did not. And those that did not prepare were left out. Keep awake, Jesus said. The Thessalonians are being reminded that they already know that Jesus will return. As children of the light and of the day and not the darkness, they should live faithfully, alert and clear-minded, clothed with faith and love, and wearing the hope of salvation as their head covering. And Paul says, For God has destined us not for wrath, but for obtaining salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live with him. Therefore, encourage one another. Build each other up. Bertrand Russell, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1950, had this to say, I know a person 
who frightened his congregation terribly by telling them the second coming was very imminent indeed. But they were much consoled when they found he was planting trees in his garden. Waiting when you don't exactly know what is going to happen can be disconcerting, frightening, upsetting, and depressing. These feelings are real, and they're experienced by Christians as well as people who do not believe in Jesus, and they do not have the hope of salvation through Christ. The hope that allows us to plant trees in our gardens while we wait for Jesus to return. There is a sense of helplessness when a situation is out of our control. For the early church, the idea that Jesus was returning was exciting, and they were filled with anticipation. But as time went on and Jesus did not return, it became easy to be discouraged and to doubt. Therefore, encourage one another and build up each other, as indeed you are doing. Is there a more appropriate sentence in our scripture lesson for our current times? Like the church in the New Testament, we also live in a time of waiting for Christ's return. And I think it is safe to say that most of us have been overwhelmed at one time or another with a year that has just turned upside down. But scary as it has been, we have the assurance that in Christ, we are not alone. Encourage one another. Help each other out. Make a phone call. Send a note. Pray for each other. Reach out to each other. And be kind. We can learn that during this time of waiting, that living as Jesus taught us isn't about going to church, but about being the church. It's not about going to church, it's about being the church. Now last March, I never imagined the extent of the pandemic and how it has affected families. And as we enter this holiday season, many of our traditions are shattered. It is difficult not to be with children, grandchildren, and parents, and to celebrate Thanksgiving. In reality, it is overwhelming, and we generally, we really, truly, grieve these losses. Encourage one another. Build up each other. Building up implies imparting strength and courage to do what is right, according to Freiburg's Analytical Greek Lexicon. Build each other up. Help each other do the right thing in the face of a difficult situation, even if that means sacrificing a visit or holiday with loved ones to keep them safe. This is a time of waiting of waiting for the pandemic to end so that we can be free to be around others without the worry of infection. And so we can safely gather together in person to worship. But most importantly, this is a time of waiting for Jesus to return. And Jesus will return. We can count on this. We may not know when the the exact time will happen, but that's okay, because we are children of the day and children of the light. And that waiting isn't always us waiting, but it could be someone waiting for us. I was comforted and could anticipate the destination of my mixed up trip to Florida, knowing that someone I loved and that loved me was waiting for me and waiting to welcome me. We can draw comfort and hope, especially at this moment when we are tired and we are frazzled and we're exhausted and confused. And when depression threatens to overtake us, 
We still have hope because our Savior who loves us is coming again to welcome us to God's eternal kingdom where God waits for us. It's good news. It's the good news. Therefore, continue to encourage one another and build up each other as indeed you are already doing. Let's pray. Dear Lord, in these days of waiting for your return, when we are discouraged, depressed, and even grieving the loss of being with loved ones and their tra traditions that we share, teach us to encourage each other and build one another up so our sorrow can turn to joy as we anticipate meeting our Savior, Jesus Christ. In his name we pray. Amen. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of the church, ignite your people with the passion of your love. By the fire of your Holy Spirit, unify us across ministries, congregations, and denominations, and refine us to participate in your activity throughout the world. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. Lord of creation, we stand in awe of the works of your hands and praise you for the beauty of nature. Bless the earth for your glory and restore its integrity where exploitation has caused ruin. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, your mercy is great. Lord of the nations, sound forth your justice in the ears of all leaders. Increase concern for those who are most vulnerable, especially as international leaders forge trade agreements and cooperate to end human rights abuses. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Lord of all in need, search out all who cry for you to you in distress. Scatter the heavy clouds of depression, chronic illness, unemployment, and loneliness with your radiant light. Send us as encouragement and signs of your healing. And Lord, we pray for Don and Rod and Susan and Mary Lou and Jody and Elijah and PMA Irvin and Everett and Kim and Cammy and Bill and Chris and Pastor Sel and Pamela and Don and Marla and Cassidy and all those affected by COVID-19. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of the stranger, stir up holy restlessness in us to extend love to those at the margins. Release our desire for control and open us to learn from the perspectives of others. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Lord of the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all the saints at rest from their labors. Rouse us to live by their example, that saints yet to come may also know your love. Hear us, O oh God. 
Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with you. you. At this time, if you're at home and you have other family members with you, you want to share the peace with them, please do. The Lord be with you all. This would also be our offering time, um, in which I uh, obviously is not, we are not coming to your house to collect, but please do remember the expenses of the church, and, and we thank you so much for sharing in the ministry. Let's pray together our offering prayer, or our prayer of thanksgiving, I'm sorry, that is on page 8. We pray together. God of abundance, you have poured out a large measure of earthly blessings. Our table is richly furnished. Our cup overflows, and we live in safety and security. Teach us to set our hearts on you, and not these material blessings. Keep us from being captivated by prosperity, and grant us in wisdom to use your blessings to your glory and to the service of men and humankind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We now sing our hymn, our sending hymn of O Zion Haste, and in the ELW it's 668.
in peace, share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.